Well, that was quite a short field landing. Woo! Hello everybody, my name is Mike Thompson and I just made a short field landing at the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School course. Now, we are so happy that you're watching this video, but remember, to be successful, there are three parts to this course. The first one is to read and study the online course. These videos are the second part. They parallel that online course. And number three, and just as important, especially when it becomes uh, comes to performance data, you are going to want to review all of this one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. So, what about these short field takeoffs and landings? Let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, you can see on the performance chart right here, we're talking about short field takeoff distance at 2,550 pounds. Now, there's a couple of things we want to take into consideration. First of all, what if I'm not at 2,550 pounds? What if I'm taking off and I weigh a little bit less, maybe 2,400 pounds or 2,200 pounds? What do you think would happen to the takeoff distance? If I'm lighter, I'll take off in a shorter distance, exactly correct. There is a chart for 2,400 pounds and 2,200 pounds. We're just working with the chart at 2550. The next thing I want you to notice is at the takeoff speeds. Notice there's a liftoff speed and a speed to clear a 50-foot obstacle. Do you see here at the end of the red arrow it says 51 and 56. And you're thinking, now hold on a second. I thought my VX speed was 62. Hmm, you're correct. The way we resolve this issue is we look up the definition for VX and we find that it says nothing about flaps. Now, if you look at the conditions here at the top of the chart, the first condition says 10 degrees of flaps. And so under these conditions, the manufacturer is telling us the liftoff speed will be 51 and the obstacle clearance will be 56, then I'll accelerate to VX, and then VY, and then cruise, etc. You'll review all of this with your flight instructor. So that brings up our second point, and that is, remember, to always, always, always read the conditions and the notes on any performance chart. So at the top of the chart, we've already looked at the conditions. It says 10 degrees of flaps. It also says full throttle prior to brake release, a paved level dry runway. What if I don't have a paved level dry runway or my flaps are at zero and I don't go to full throttle prior to brake release? Am I going to expect the numbers on this chart? What do you think? No, actually, those takeoff distances will be a little bit longer. Take a look at the notes at the bottom of the chart. The notes talk about using the short field technique, etc. So if I am not in compliance with the notes and conditions that are mentioned on this chart, I'm going to get a takeoff distance different than what is shown. So what do I do here? What we're going to do here is we're going to use an old aviation rule of thumb. We're going to take our distance and increase it by 150%. Okay, we're going to do that calculation in just a second. First, let's get to our performance number. Now, when we talk about performance, remember it is affected by density altitude. And what's density altitude? Who remembers? It is pressure altitude corrected for 
temperature. Well, do we see that in this chart? Hmm, let's take a close look. If we enter on the left side of the chart, coming down pressure altitude, that's correcting for pressure altitude. Now, if I go horizontally across the chart to my current temperature, that is pressure altitude corrected for temperature. So, those numbers shown in the chart are automatically accounting for density altitude calculations. Now, that's pretty cool. What if I come down the pressure altitude column and I'm not at 5,000 feet? What if I'm at 4,100 feet or 4,700 feet? I don't see that on the chart. Uh-oh, what do I do now? Well, there's two things I can do. Number one, I can interpolate. Or, number two, I can go to the next higher value on the chart. By going to the next higher value, I give myself a little bit of safety leeway. So now that we've got some of those details behind us, let's take an example problem and see what we come up with for a takeoff distance and clearance over a 50-foot obstacle. So let's say today we have a 5,000-foot pressure altitude and an OAT of 30 degrees. Now, for those of you who ride horseback out in Colorado and Wyoming, that is not the oats for your horse. That is outside air temperature. So in our case, we're going to come down the pressure altitude column. There it is, 5,000 feet. You can see it here. Then we're going to move horizontally, right down to 30 degrees Celsius, and we find that our ground roll is 1,705 feet, and to clear a 50-foot obstacle, 2,975 feet. Well, remember we said if we're not in compliance with all the notes and conditions, wouldn't those distances be longer? Yes, they would. And the old rule of thumb was, who remembers? Right, times it by 150%. So I'm going to take my ground roll, 1705, and I'm just going to ballpark cut it in half. So I'm going to round it up to 1800. Half of that is 900. 1700 plus 900. What do I get? About 2,600 feet or so. Now, if I'm looking at a 5,000-foot runway, I know that 2,600 puts me approximately halfway down the runway. And I know that my airplane should be performing such that it rotates and lifts off by that point. Well, how do I know I'm halfway down the runway? Now, I want you to work with your flight instructor on this. There are various visual cues. Remember, one of them is distance markers down the side of the runway. If I don't have those at the airport, I might be able to use runway stripes. Or, if I take a careful look at my airport diagram, I see where various taxiways intersect the runway, and I can give myself ballparks as I pass taxiways on my takeoff roll, quarter way, half way, three quarters of the way, down the runway, etc. So work with your flight instructor on that. So there you go, folks. We're in, we're in the air. Woohoo! Nice short field takeoff. Well done. Good job. We're going around the patch or the traffic pattern. And we need to land. Now we're going to come back to land and we want to make a performance prediction, a performance calculation for our landing distance. Well, guess what? We're going to do something very similar. Here is the short field landing distance chart. Now again, this chart is for 2,550. You see that? What are the chances I'm going to be landing at maximum gross weight? Even if I took off at 2,550 pounds, I've already burned some fuel I'm already going to be lighter than that, 
And is there a chart in here for landing distances for 2,400 pounds, for 2,200 pounds? The answer is, drum roll please. No. The reason for that is because if I'm lighter, my landing distances will be shorter. So any landing distance calculation I get for my 172 at 2,550 pounds will be greater than my actual landing distance at a lighter weight. Okay, that makes sense. But remember, we said take a look at notes and conditions always, always, always. Again, look at our notes and conditions. Full flaps, power off, maximum braking, and in the notes I see short field technique from section four, etc. What if I'm not in compliance with all those notes and conditions? Will these landing distances apply? No. Now, I've got the safety factor of calculating this at gross weight, but I still am going to use my old aviation rule of thumb. I'm going to multiply this by 150%. So let's come into this chart with our example. 5,000 foot pressure altitude, right down that left hand column. 30 degrees Celsius, horizontal to 30 degrees. Now I have pressure altitude corrected for temperature. And what do I see? A ground roll of 725 feet. And over a 50 foot obstacle, 1,575 feet. Remember, that's at gross weight. And I'm less than gross weight, so I'm going to be a little less than that already. But if I don't use what's described in notes and conditions, and I'm just going to go, for example, the normal landing technique, I'm going to add the additional safety factor of multiplying it by 150%. So if I'm landing over a 50 foot obstacle and it says 1,575, I'm going to round that off to 16. What's half of 16? 800 feet. So I take eh, 1,600 plus 800, maybe 2,400, and I know I've got a nice safety cushion. Well, folks, I hope you found that useful. That's how we use the short field takeoff and landing performance calculation charts. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.